Wait, what's a cute card? Bio, Bio Visionary. That's a multicolor one, the, the blue green one or whatever. The win the game one. Um, I'm looking for that. Sasha likes the red spell, but I like that black white creature. It's a human wizard. Good, good creature types. Human wizard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that card sucks. <laughs> I mean, the first card I think of is Cackling Counterpart, and then there's literally not a single card that I think of after that. Cackling Counterpart and Evil Twin, that's really all I can think of. Right, or like Clone, but like, are you really going to play Bio Visionary and then Clone, Clone, Clone it, and then untap and win? The oh no, it's beginning of the end step. Okay, that's, a, li that's a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I'm going to do. Usually usually those are upkeep effects, so that is a, that is an improvement though, right? Because well, that's, right. that's exactly what's going to happen now. Well, no, but even in like other formats, if you play that and then you r kick a Rite of Replication at it? Yeah. Blue-Green Tron? Fuck yeah. Yeah. I hope they don't Magma Quake. I hope your mom, <laughs> I hope your mom doesn't Magma Quake. <laughs> that would suck. If she Magma Quaked. <laughs> all, no. over, all over my face, and I'm just like, oh, gross. But I was, I, was, I had three of them out. I had three Biovisionaries. I was almost there. <laughs> I, would, oh. I, would lo I would love to wrath someone at three Biovisionaries. <laughs> they put them like, Visionary, Clone, Clone, and then you're just like, fucking Supreme Verdict, get out of here. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> or they, they go to play the fourth one, and you just, uh... Alchemist Refuge, the Supreme Verdict into play. Or just like Cyclonic Rift, the trigger on the stack or whatever. Oh, that's so mean. Yeah, then the clone just goes to the graveyard. No, no, on the end step with the trigger on the stack, you rift them and then have to cast them again all next turn. Well, I was thinking because if they go to play the fourth clone, you just Cyclonic Rift them and then the, the fourth clone dies. That also works, yes. <laughs> I don't like a lot of these cards. A lot of the cards are bad. Yeah. So, Ryan, you like the black-white one? I think that one's the best. Yeah. Obzidot? Yeah. How much cooler would he be if you were able to... Con if you didn't have to put him back onto the battlefield? Oh, if you could leave him in exile? That would be insane. I would play fucking Worldfire, dude. I'd be like, Worldfire! <laughs> <laughs> it works! It works! Worldfire! <laughs> Everyone accumulates, like, Obsidants in the exile zone just waiting. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, I'm gonna have more Obsidants. <laughs> yeah, because you can't world fire and pass turn against somebody with Obsidant exile. Yeah. Yeah, that's an answer to fucking... I'll play my Thrank Tusk, I'll cast world fire. It's like, okay, Obsidant comes back. You lose two. You lose two, yeah. Um... No, I, I like Obsidat. I think he's a good card. His his creature type's a little awkward for having such a heavy mana cost. Like, he doesn't leave a lot of room for playing cards like Vault of the Archangel, Cavern of Souls. Uh, I don't know, if you branch to another color and you want to play, like, Moreland Haunt, or you know what I mean? Right, I think you have to branch to another color. I think everyone's going to play three or four. Yeah. Unless it's dedicated about... aggro decks, of course. Well, you're just talking about red deck wins, right? Yeah, like, dedicated aggro is, like, the only card, uh, decks that play one or two colors. It really is, like, beneficial to just go three color, though. Yeah. Because like, it have... helps more to be four or three. <laughs> well, especially playing, like, a, a really curvy deck that's, like, lots of one and two drops, because you get all those standing lands. Yeah. Actually, Sasha, I take it back. I think that red card is probably more impact. Yeah. See? The, the more you think about it, that, the more those you cards realize are cool, like, Aurelia, Borbori <laughs> No, that card's sick. Yeah. It's just, I don't know if it's insane, it's just high impact on the format. It takes care of the two strongest cards in the format. Right. Well, yeah. In an already T1 deck. Right, but you're obviously considering it from a metagame perspective. Like, obviously you're not like, oh my god, modern! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, that dude, card's not insane, it's just it's high impact in this format right now. Yeah, because okay. modern already has this effect with Flames of the Firebrand or Bloodbrand or whatever brand. Blood what? Flames of the Blood Hand. Is that oh, the, yeah. What's that card? The three drop that... It, it's this, but it does four. Yeah. You guys agree that Gideon is not really anything to write home he's, about? His potential. You think he's potential? Yes. Exile all other permanents, even your... No, 
What's the like, point of that? It's a full mana 7-7 seven, seven or better, right? Okay. I think you need to stop saying that, Sasha. He's not necessarily a 7-7. <laughs> seven, seven. Seven, seven. Well, I agree that my initial reaction was that he's a very bad card, but I don't think people should just count him out straight away. He's, he's not a 4-mana 7-7, seven, seven, though. I think because that's what it's going to be majority of the time, though. Well, see, I mean, he can't he just die? I mean, are you going to play him on turn four? If they have a f- three creatures, isn't he just dead? I mean, are you playing creatures and him? I don't know. I mean, what, if, they're, if their play? creatures are, like, Augur Bolas or, like, Invisible Stalker, like... I know, but I'm saying what deck... Oh, okay, yeah, if they're playing, like, Augur. But what Josh deck is he playing? Josh is his him? worst enemy. Where do you... What? He's Geralt's I... Messenger's worst enemy? Is that what you said? No, no, he's Geist of St. Trough and Azorius Charm's worst enemy. Oh, no, uh, they're the enemy of him. Like, Zora's Charm and Geist wreck him. Yeah. How does Geist wreck him, though? Because you attack everything. You just put him down for one, and then comes the shit. No, you just... It kills him. Right. No, if you attack him with everything, it kills him, right? If if you have a Geist of St. Trough in play, and they play Gideon and plus one him, you just kill him next turn. By attacking with Geist and the Angel at him? Yeah, it does six. Yeah. He'd be at but, six. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like How this guy. People would even care, though. A majority of people, I think, would just ignore the Gideon. Maybe. I mean, you might just want to take it down, and then, like... Like, if you're just playing the card advantage game. Because you can always Azorius charm the Gideon. I mean, you could just kill the Gideon and pass the turn with a bunch of counter spells up. <laughs> yeah. I also like how Skullcrack just, like... Like, makes Gideon worthless. How does... Okay, so how does that work again? Okay, read the text on Gideon. Right, I mean, like, I, I read it, but... Yeah, you, it has to be indestructible and prevent all damage. So damage dealt to him doesn't remove his loyalty counters, right? Right. So by skull cracking, you, he can't gain life and damage can't be prevented. So the damage can't be prevented while it's a creature. You redirect the three damage to remove three loyalty counters. And the combat damage, even though he is indestructible, will remove loyalty counters, removing the Planeswalker. What? Wait, because what? Gideon's ability prevents all damage that will be dealt to him this turn. And Skullcrack makes damage can't be prevented. Oh, so See? when he's dealt damage in combat, the reason that yeah. doesn't remove loyalty is just because of that damage prevention clause? Yes, that is exactly why. I did not know that. He has to be indestructible and remove uh, prevent all I thought that damage. was just, like, something that Gideon did. I thought I thought that if he was dealt damage in combat, I thought it was just direct damage that would, uh, in combat da- Well, I guess, yeah, combat damage. No, it's just the ruling thing to make the Planeswalker creature thing work. But he's in, he's still indestructible. Yes, oh, but he has zero loyalty, loyalty counters, so he just dies. Counter, so he has two ways of dying. Yes. I mean, you wouldn't even have to do it to the Gideon, right? What do you mean? The Skullcrack helps, like, if he's on a higher loyalty count or whatever. Right. I remember, his power and toughness changes, right? Right, but, like, let's say they have a 4-4 four, four Gideon... And you have a Thrag Tusk, and you just want to do the three to their face and block with the Thrag Tusk, and you're cool with just having the beast? Yes, that's fine. Because the, da- the damage still gets prevented. Or, I'm sorry, the damage still gets un- not prevented. So it's like... Yes, he's indestructible, but the damage is put onto him, which results in result uh, loss of loyalty counters. Yeah. Yeah, so he'd be at zero loyalty. And just dies, yes. Did they go to negative loyalty technically, or no? Wait, why do you keep saying he's indestructible, though? Because he's indestructible. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, he becomes he's indestructible. indestructable. I didn't read that either when I first. Say so indestructible is to keep the creature from dying, and the prevent all damage to keep the planeswalker from dying. Yeah, no, I I, I get it now. Not necessarily. I mean, the old Gideon just prevented all damage, right? The old Gideon. No, didn't... old Gideon made him indestructible as well. No, no way. No way. Pretty you... sure. I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same. No, way because you can go and throw Gideon. Gideon yeah. Jura. Are you sure about this? Being... It no. prevents all damage, yes. He was you're, you're correct, you were correct. Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I was fucking doomblading that guy on the reg. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a nice Gideon go for the throat. Yeah, I have go for the throat at a lot of Gideons. <laughs> I was like, if, if I was wrong about this, then this is a, this is a big deal. Because <laughs> I've cheated a lot. 
What? I wonder why they made it indestructible then.